powerful night. Coming right now is another gentleman that I know is going to bless you. You've probably watched him for years as I have uh, on television. He's always, he's just this dealer of truth, man. He just laying the word out to help your mind. We need a right head today. We need right thoughts today if you're going to go to the right place. And tonight we have a man that's going to help us with that. The proper introduction to this man goes like this. He's the founder and senior pastor of Life Changers International Church in Chicago, Illinois. Host of The Power to Change Today, international telev television ministry. He's a host of Ask the Pastor, a live radio and internet program heard five days a week, author of multiple books. We are blessed to have with us tonight. Help me welcome Pastor Gregory Dickow. Would you do that? God bless Thank you. Thank you. Such a joy to have you tonight, My Pastor. My pleasure. Great to be here. It really is. I've watched, I've watched you deal truth for years and speak to people's minds and hearts and, and, and get things realigned, almost what we were talking about tonight, find that rhythm in that's the right. scripture and the truth. Yeah. And, uh, and I know that that's your heartbeat, that's your passion. It's great to have you on TBN tonight. Well, it's really great to be with, uh, with you guys and uh, an amazing audience and uh, uh, reaching the world. What Paul and Jan are doing, like you said earlier, somebody said, uh, to build something that is truly taking the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ around the world. Yes. We're honored to be a part of it, and that's really our mission. We've got to go into this world and preach the gospel like we never have before. That's right, that's right. And it is good news. That's it is right. good news. It's good news because God is a good God, and the world has been misled about God. I think one yes. of the biggest problems in the body of Christ or in the world today is the wrong concept of God. When we, yes. when we don't understand who He really is, People don't want to follow him. You know, I'm reminded of a scripture in Deuteronomy when, uh, when the children of Israel literally said to Moses, they said, Be we believe God hates us. And Moses said, because you believe the Lord hated you, that's why you died in the wilderness. It's yes. because they really had a wrong concept of God. They thought yes. God was against them. They thought God didn't understand what they were going through. They yes. thought God had departed from them. But oftentimes, like you know and I know, when we feel like God, we sometimes do feel like God has departed, but He never yes, does. He'll absolutely. never, He'll never leave us or forsake us, and that's the goodness of God. It, it really is, and and we have to remind ourselves of that truth because circumstances can lie. Life really lies, true. and it really tries to convince us otherwise. But this message that you carry, Pastor, you really help to level and and, and really remind folks what the relationship with Christ, with God, is really all about. Would you kind of talk, just kind of level that whole thing? What's the most important thing you want to remind us about that relationship? Well, I think that that's really the most important thing. What you just said is that Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with yes, God. And yes. it is a, it is a yeah, um, yeah. I like to call it, I like to call it a love affair with God. Yes, really, you're, yes. you're, you're, when you're now, hopefully nobody watching is having an affair outside of their marriage, but for those that have, they, they people understand what it is when you're caught up in love with somebody, when all of a sudden out of nowhere, you have these enormous feelings of affection yes. and love for somebody. Yes. That's the relationship that God wants to have with us right. all the time to yes. be madly in love with him because he's madly in love with us. I, I like to say That's um, good. That's good. that God's not mad at you. He's mad about about you, and um, yeah, and yeah, I like so that. many people think, so many people, Pastor, think that that God is mad at them, that he right. that he's against them, that he's shocked and surprised at the sins that they commit. Like like the bishop had said earlier, it right. was like when he realized that he could be honest and yes. he could he had to be honest is yes. when we confess our sins. He's faithful. He's just to cleanse us and he heals us as well. So this. When you know that he loves you, you can be honest with God. When yes. you know that you're, that you're adored by him. You know, I think about mm, Jesus so in Mark chapter 1 when he came up out of the waters of baptism before he ever preached a sermon, before he ever healed the sick, before he ever did a miracle, before he ever uh, raised the dead, before he ever fed the multitudes, before he ever died on the cross for our sins, God spoke to him out of heaven and the voice came and said, you are my beloved son yeah. and in you I'm well pleased. He hadn't never done anything for God yet because so often people think we got to do for God but it's not what we do for God it's yes. what he's done for us yes. that results in our gratefulness yes. and our gratitude and that's why we want to serve him but but he said over Jesus he said you are my beloved son and you I'm well pleased and when and it was the affirmation and the, the approval the love of the father for yes. Jesus that freed him from needing people's approval. Yes. When you have God's approval, you don't need man's approval. You don't need man to affirm you yes. and to and to recognize you. Jesus was not 
he was not afraid of what anybody thought about him because he had that, that seal of approval. Yes. You are my beloved son. And God wants us to know that we are in Christ. If we're born again, we're in Christ. That those same words that God said to Jesus yes. are the words that we need to hear in our heart. Because I believe, Pastor, you'll never hear the voice of God until you first hear the voice of love. That when you know wow. the first words wow. from God to Jesus publicly written in the Bible, I love you, yes. you're my son, I'm pleased with you. And when people so get good. a hold of that, so good. it transforms their lives forever. It really does, Pastor. And that, you know, sometimes we just kind of want to sideline that little word love because we're looking for the deeper things. Yeah. But isn't that the most humbling reality? I'm accepted, embraced, and loved in spite of me. It's the, it's the greatest truth and the most powerful force in the universe. Solomon said, many waters cannot quench love. Yes. Rivers cannot overflow yes. love. Yes. The love of God never fails. Yes. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Yes. It drives out our worries. It drives Come out on. our anxieties. Yes. Yes. It's yes. not perfect love, the love that we have for others, although God wants us to certainly have love for others. Perfect love in the Bible is the love that God has for us as yes. our Heavenly Father. That's yes. perfect love. And when you know that, it, it transforms your life. And it, like you said, it is, it's such a simple word and it's such a simple truth. And it is sort of put on the side sometimes. But think of it this way. And I like our viewers to think of it this way is that when, when Jesus, when this woman, they brought her to Jesus and put her in front of him. She was caught in adultery. Right. And, and of course, everybody knows the story. Jesus said, you know, whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. And they all dropped their rocks from the, the Bible says from the oldest to the youngest, they dropped their <laughs> rocks because they all, they all realized they had a whole boatload of sins in their lives. So they dropped their rocks and they leave and walk away. And all that's left is Jesus and this woman, because that's really... All that's left after all of our accusers have been silenced, all that's yes. left is us and Jesus. Yes. And, and Jesus looked at her and he said, woman, who condemns you now? Yes. And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus responded to her with, to me, the greatest words that a person could ever hear. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Yes. And then he said, now go and sin no more. Right. Religion has it backwards. Churchianity has it backwards. There you, go. there you go. Religion says, go and sin no more, and then God won't condemn you. But God says, I don't condemn you. Yes. Now go and sin no more. In other words, love and forgiveness and mercy comes first. Yes. And then that produces the power to go and sin no more. He, she couldn't have gone and sinned no more until she first knew she was forgiven and yes. loved by Absolutely. God. Absolutely. That is so good. That is so good. That is so good. I, I think back to the story when the four friends brought their friend who was, uh, had, had the, uh, the palsy and they were letting him down through the roof. Yeah. And the first thing Jesus said is, son, yeah. your sins are forgiven. He gave him position before that's he right. addressed the condition. That's, that's good. That's it. And I think we have to bring that back around again. Boy, it's he true. loves me right where I am. He gave him affirmation. Yes. He gave him affection. He gave him love. He included him. He called him his own. Yes. You're my son. Yes. You are somebody. You are in my family now. And that's when healing came, right? Yes, yes, so, yes. So, that's so, good. so isn't that the message of restoration then? Because people today are caught in all kinds of things. They're struggling and battling in all, in all areas, whether it's uh, financial, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's relationships, there's a struggle there. And to fully be restored, is that the core of the message? Well, it is. And there's, there's so much to, to the, the core of the message of how God, you know, we're living in a world that is broken. Uh, emotionally yes. broken, spiritually broken, uh, relationally yes, broken yes. in the families, broken financially. And um, the Bible says after Jesus came, well, when Jesus came, the first thing he came to do, he said, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So the first thing that Jesus came to do was preach the gospel. But the very next thing he says in Luke chapter four is he said, and he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. So once we are born again and once we're saved, the, the next thing that God does is he comes and, and he brings all of his power and all of his wisdom and all of his word and all of his grace to heal the brokenness in our lives. Yes. Broken souls, broken marriages, yes. broken families, broken hearts, broken finances, broken mm. bodies. So restoration comes first from knowing the gospel, knowing God is good, knowing that he loves us, and then God begins to heal us. The anointing comes to heal us yes. through the word of God. Yes. Paul, uh, uh, David said, 
restore my soul, Lord. He restores my soul and yes. then leads me as my soul is restored, yes. as my mind is renewed, as my soul is 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 prospering. Then the rest of my life follows. Yes, and 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 that's that's one of been uh, the predominant message that I remember you leading so powerfully on dealing with this thinking. Yes. Helping people create a rhythm of the right thinking based on God's Word. Forty days, in fact, yeah. of thinking right. T tell us about this. Well, a few years ago, um, I was just, I was frustrated. And, you know, we have, uh, we, we all encounter something that I like to call divine frustration. You felt it. Yes, I sir. felt it. We've Absolutely. all felt it. Where we're frustrated, but it's it's a divine frustration. It's It's meant to awaken us to, to, to look for something from God, to, to find an answer, to, to ask God for wisdom. And so I had mm. this divine frustration. I was coming into a new year and I felt like I, I saw so many people starting and stopping New Year's resolutions and starting and stopping to quit things or to give up things or to change things or to lose weight or to stop smoking or to overcome their anger. And, right. and yet it, they, they would do it for a few weeks and then of course, a few weeks later, people give up on their resolutions. They they don't really see lasting change because right. willpower just isn't enough yes. to uh, to change us. And so I said, Lord, I'm so frustrated seeing people trying new things. They even try to try to exercise, try to diet, they try to fast, they try to do all of these things. And I heard the Lord say, I want you to call a 40-day fast. And I said, Lord, I'm hungry. I don't want to call a fast. I'm not calling a fast. I like to eat, Lord. And, and all the people in my church like to eat. Nobody's going to show up for church if I call a 40-day fast for sure. And, um, and, and the Lord said, not a fast from food. And I've never heard this before. It had to have been from God. And he said, call a fast from wrong thinking. Because it is our thinking mm. that produces our living. As, yes. a, as a man thinks within, so is he, yes. Proverbs 23 says. So, so he said, call a fast for 40 days. And that's what emerged is I just said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And I invited people in my church. I invited people on television to join me on a journey where every day we would fast from, wrong, from, from one wrong way of thinking. Uh, thinking like, I feel overwhelmed or thinking like I'm such a failure or I'll never make it or whatever the thought is. I would take one thought and then I would show people step by step how to wow. overcome that thought with the word of God. Five steps every day and every day people would get an email and they they fast from one wrong way of thinking. And wow. what's, what happened, Pastor, is that people started doing this and it's easy because all you got to do is open your email and read the thought that you're fasting from and then read the read the simple steps to change the way you think. Yes. And. I started getting all of these testimonies in of people that had quit smoking Come and on. people that had lost weight and people that were no longer angry and people that whose marriages got healed because they weren't trying to fix those things yes. as they renewed their mind and as they fasted from wrong thinking the right thinking produced right living. And that that's what so fasting good. from wrong that's thinking so is all good. about and that's what renewing our mind is all about. One yes. lady wrote me and she said she, uh, she said, my children, I've been, do, I've been fasting from wrong thinking with you for two weeks. She said, my children looked at me and they said, they said, you don't get mad at us anymore. You, you've lost weight in two weeks. You, you, you're not angry all the time. Wow. Who are you and what did you do with our mother? That's what the children <laughs> said. So it was a total life transformation. Wow. That, that, the word will not return void. That's right. It's going to make an impact and it's like a bulldozer. It's going to push everything. Either I shift or the issue has got to go. And I think, I, uh, Pastor, what you continue to levy in people's lives, elevating that word, the word, the word, the word really is the answer, isn't Amen. it? Amen. It, it really, really is. is. You know, when you think of, um, I think of the great, one of the greatest transformations in the Bible, one of the greatest miracles was Jesus' first miracle when he turned water into wine. And the Bible says, they said, we're out of wine. He said, fill the water pots with water. And they filled the water pots with water. And only when it came to the top, yes. Jesus said, now draw some out. And the miracle took place when they had filled the, the vessel with water to the top. And the vessel is our lives. The yes. vessel is us. As human beings, That's we're good. human vessels. Yes. And as we fill our lives up with the word of God, yes. and it says it filled up to the brim. So as we fill our lives, fill our minds with God's word to our knees, to our waist, to our chest, to where that's all that's coming out of our mouth, that's 
all that's going in our ears. That's yes. all we're looking at with our eyes. That's yes. all we're thinking with our head. Then the word has filled us up to the brim. And that's when the miracle of transformation takes place. Yes. That's when the water turned to, to wine. That's when sickness is going to turn to healing. That's when, uh, when anxiety is going to turn to peace. That's when, when depression is going to turn to, is going to turn to joy. Yes. Yes. That's when our lives are changed as our minds are flooded yes. with the word of God yes. to overflowing. Absolutely. Now for those who will be watching and say, Oh, okay. Heard this kind of thing. That's just another twist on self-help. Yeah. How would you speak to that? What would you say to that person that says, well, it just sounds like you're just following these steps. You're just still helping yourself. How would you, how, what would you answer to that person? Yeah, that's a great, that's a excellent question. I think that the, the most important thing, the, I think the most important thing is we, we have to realize that self-help is helping our, there's nothing wrong with helping ourselves. Self-help, we, you know, we want to help ourselves. Yes. You, I mean, you know, got to put the, the oxygen mask on yourself first and then help with your small Thank child, you. right? Yes, yes, so we yes, got to yes. take care of ourselves and take care of our soul and take care of our spirit. And then we're right. in a position to be able to help people. But the difference between what we're talking about, changing the way we think, is that we're not just creating positive thoughts, we're filling our mind with God's thoughts. And God's word carries God's thoughts. And yes. as we fill our heart and fill yes. our mind with God's word and God's thoughts, that's when real change takes place. Self-help, when it's just uh, a gimmick or when it's just a man trying to be better, trying to improve himself uh, in his own power, it, it doesn't last. Yes. But the yes. word brings, the word of God brings lasting change. Amen. That's when we're going to see results that God Amen. wants us to have. And you know what? That is the hope we're talking about tonight. This is so far beyond humanism. It's so far beyond what we can work up in, in our humanity. This is God's word. That's right. And it's, it trumps everything. You know, you one know? of the greatest verses that, that comes to me when you talk about that, and, and Jeremiah 29, 11, and most people need to understand that God knows. And the first two, the first two words of that verse is God knows. He said, I know, wow. yes. I know. I think people need to know and they need to That's feel good. that God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're feeling. Yes. God knows what you're struggling with. Jesus himself struggled in Mark chapter 14. The Bible says he was so weighed down by the anxiety of people's sins, by the, the weight of the responsibility of going to the cross, that the Bible says he despaired for his own life. He, he, was, ready to, he, was, he was ready to turn away from right. the mission that he had to yes. go to the cross. Yes. And the Bible says that, he, the first thing he did was he fell on his knees and he worshiped God and he prayed. He was depressed like many people watching. He was discouraged like many people watching. Yes. He, he, was, he felt everything we feel yet without sin. Yes. I think people need to know that we serve a Savior. We're saved by a Savior who has felt every weakness that yeah. we've ever felt, every temptation we've ever felt, right. yet without sin. And yet we need to know he knows what we're going through and he has a way through the temptation to quit, the temptation to go back to drugs, the temptation to go back to Egypt, the temptation to go back to our sins, the temptation to, to give up. Jesus had that temptation to give up. And the yes. first thing he did was he called on God and he said, Abba, Father, yes. if this cup can pass for me, let it pass. Abba, Father, it means, Father, Father, I know that you love me. Mm. Any, any temptation you're facing right now, anything you're going through right now, if you want to break free, the first thing you need to know is, and first thing you need to say is, Father, Father, I know that you love me. That's good. And when you know he loves you, that's when things are going to change in your life. So Jesus said, Father, Father, I know that you love me. And then he said, if this cup can pass from me, I want this cup to pass from me. Yes. So a lot of times, Pastor, Christians are afraid to be honest with God. Right, Like right. the bishop shared earlier how he got free by tell, being honest with God. Jesus was honest with God. Yes. He said, I don't want to go to the cross. Right. Who's watching right now? You don't want to love your wife like Christ loves the church. Right. You don't want to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. You don't want to tithe. You don't want right. to obey God. We're always at times in our lives. There's always times in our lives where we just don't want so to obey God. And Jesus didn't want his feelings, didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to make that sacrifice. Yes. He told God how he felt. And I think this is what people need to do. They need, you need to tell God how you feel. That's good. And then, but then you, you make a decision. He told God, I don't want to do it. And then he said, but not my will, thy will be done. So he, yes. he expressed his, his feelings towards God, but then he made his decision yes. regarding which direction he was going to go with God. Yes. And as soon as he made that decision, angels came and strengthened him yes. to be able to do what God had called him to do. The yes. angels didn't come 
when he was feeling all of that. The angels came when he made the decision. That's so good. be honest with God. Tell him how you feel. Then surrender to God, and angels will come to strengthen you no matter yeah. what you're facing right Boy, now. Boy, that's so good, Pastor. That's good stuff right there. That's, that's hope. Those are answers. Pastor, I call that, one of the things I call that falling out of love, falling out of love with your feelings, because so many of us are okay. attached to our feelings. We, we love our feelings, though yes. our feelings betray us. We love our feelings, though our feelings are schizophrenic. We love our feelings, though they change, yeah. uh, they go up and down. We love our feelings, and yet, and yet they're unfaithful to us. We yes. love our feelings, and yet they don't care the outcome. They right. don't care about the consequences. Right. That's why we got to fall out of love with our feelings yes. and fall in love with God's Word and fall in love with God and fall in That's love so with good. God's people That's and so fall good. in love with making right decisions. Yes, yes, absolutely. I was telling our church a little while back when Jesus was praying that prayer, uh, I'm glad to hear his humanity yeah. because we have that. That's I mean, right. David prayed prayers that were not love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. God bust them in the face, let the birds eat their flesh That's off right. their bones. I mean, that was not like, Lord, bless them. You know, he was, but Jesus finished the prayer. That's right. And I think when we followed up, just as you're talking about, that, that he does come to rescue and help and empower us when we just keep reaching beyond ourselves. That is rich. So true. And you're talking about this in your book, From Inside Out. This is on the fasting 40 days of yeah, negative fasting. thinking. Right. Wrong thinking. It's not fasting from food, although there is a place for that and there's a time for that. This is fasting from wrong thinking. It brings real change. I called it from the inside out because so often people want to see change in their life and they yes. try to change things on the outside. They yes. try, a lot of people think if I just change my husband, if I change my wife, if I change this, if I change, <laughs> right. the, change my job, change this. You know, you people say if I just change the city I live in. So they get in the car and they drive down to Florida, they drive down to California or wherever, and their problems get in the trunk with they them and them follow them it's right so with true. them wherever so they go. True. And what we have to do is we, we're never going to change by changing on the outside. We can only change by changing uh, our, the way we think on the inside because yes. that's what produces the change on the outside. It is literally a transformation. It's the metamorphosis. It's the, it's the caterpillar going into the cocoon. Yes. And I like to call the Word of God the cocoon as we wrap ourselves with the Word of God, yes. then we, that becomes our cocoon and it transforms us on the inside and then our day is coming. Your day is coming where you're going to break out with the wings of a butterfly and the beauty of a butterfly as you wrap yourself in the cocoon of God's Word. Amen. So be it. Oh, we say yes and amen to it. That's so good, Pastor. I want to ask you to do this if you would. Would you please pray for somebody tonight who maybe feel left out? They don't know which way to turn. They've heard what you've said. Mm -hmm. It's truth that resonates in their heart. It feels good because their spirit is alive. God wants to connect with them in that. Would you just kind of pray and help them just take that next step? Yeah, and the first, the first thing I'd like to pray for people about is there are so many watching right now and you're not saved. And you may turn the channel in a minute. And I don't want you to stay for the whole program, but right now, you know that you need a savior. You know that your sins, though they are many, they can be washed away. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God wants to save you. He wants a relationship with you. It's not rules. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Pray right now if you'd like to be saved. Just pray this out loud and just say it with your mouth. Just say, Heavenly Father. That's it. Just say that. Just say, Heavenly Father. I receive Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus Christ. Into my life. Into my life. As my Savior and Lord. As my Savior and Lord. Just say this. I believe. I believe. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Cleanses me. Cleanses from me. From all my sins. From all my sins. And from this day forward. And from this day forward. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am loved. And I am a child of God. I am a child of in God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, there's hopefully a number, I'm, I'm sure there is a number on your screen and you can call that number and tell somebody, get, get one of these great prayer partners to pray with you and to talk to you. Let them know. Let somebody know. And I pray for those that are struggling. You're depressed. You're discouraged. You feel alone. You feel hopeless. I pray for the mighty angels of God to strengthen you right now. I pray for the spirit of God's love to, to open your eyes, to, to touch you, to heal you. I pray for those who, with broken hearts to be restored right now. I pray for those with broken marriages, broken homes, broken bodies, broken hopes and dreams. Be healed yes, now yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 So good, Pastor. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. I want to encourage you. 
Go to Pastor Dickow's website, pick up these resources. It'll empower and bless your life. I know it will. This word is true and it works all the time. It doesn't have an expiration date. It always works. Right. Amen. Right now, coming back one more time is David Lucky. He's going to be singing, The Lord is God. Mm -hmm. 